Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jack Lipton. How are you today, Jack? I'm fine, Tracy. Thank you very much. Well, Jack, you're looking good. And of course, <laughs> everyone's looking at rare earths, so I guess everybody's looking at you. That's true. I've, be, I've become very busy in the last couple of months, uh, exceptionally so. And so why don't we just start right there? There's a lot of attention, for instance, on Investor Intel's website with regards to Linus. So can we just start there? What's happening with Linus that everybody is so interested in Linus presently? Well, Linus, Linus is, is trying to balance uh, its operations to satisfy both the Malaysian government and the Australian government. And the, the decision seems to be that Linus will build an ore processing plant in Australia. Uh, the ore processing part of it is the problem in Malaysia. That's where uh, the Malaysians are concerned with the buildup of uh, thorium in the residues uh, from the ore processing, not from the rare earth separation. Uh, Linus does both in Australia, very large operation. The ore is brought from Australia to Malaysia where it's uh, roasted, cracked, leached, and separated. The roasting, cracking, and, uh, and perhaps leaching is going to be moved to Aust Australia. This is a very expensive undertaking, uh, but uh, Linus says it will uh, fund this out of, out of ongoing operation revenue, so it could be done. It's a $500 million Australian dollar uh, project. Secondly, uh, Linus has indicated that it would like to put a separation plant for its heavy wear earth fraction in, in, in with its um, one of its current distributors, which is Blue, uh, Blue Line Chemicals of Texas. Now, whether or not this will happen, I I wouldn't know. What I what I've been commenting on lately is the the processing of the wares, the separation of the wares that would have to happen in Texas. I, I did a workshop two months ago, uh, and uh, the Blue Line people were there, as as were the people from the U.S. Uh, Department of Defense. So uh, this was all discussed. Now, uh, I have no opinion on whether or not this can be done in Texas. Of course, it can be done in Texas, but the economics are the issue. The economics are the real issue. And I know that Amanda LaCaze, the uh, uh, CEO of Linus, has repeatedly said recently that the world needs to understand. She said she has a memorandum of understanding with with a company in Texas. That doesn't mean that there's there's a definite funded plan to build to build a system in Texas. And for all of you out there who are watching the news, of course, the U.S. China trade war. How is this imp impacting rare earths in general and the overall well, market, Jack? A lot of my friends are calling this rare earth part due or uh, version 2.0. But, but in fact, this is the first real awareness of the, of the Washington gang that there is a problem <laughs> and that they need to find a solution. So uh, how it's impacting uh, the uh, space is that a lot of investors are now looking again at the uh, rare earth projects uh, that are still extant that are closest to production. Remember, in this non-Chinese world, we have perhaps half a dozen right now uh, producing rare earth companies. But all of the processing of heavy rare earths, for example, is done in China today. And of the, the light rare earth processing, far and away, the largest company, in, in, the largest solvent extraction system dedicated to rare earth separation on this planet is in Malaysia, and it's owned and operated by Linus. In fact, Linus has gotten approval to increase the capacity of that system to 25,000 tons a year. That, that is huge. And keep in mind that Linus operates this system. They've designed the system. They've built it. It's producing uh, separated materials and revenue, unlike one of our American companies, which fantasized they were going to make a, a 40,000 ton system in California, which is now a scrap heap. 
All right, so let's just step, step back though for a second because we at Investor Intel would be very interested if there was a rare earths part de, as you just, as you just uh, commented on. But the bottom yep. line is we're not seeing it translate to market price on any of the publicly listed market uh, companies at this time. Is anyone speculating on when we actually will see this translate? I don't know of anybody speculating on that, but I can tell you that this is a real uh, push in, in Washington, for example, and in Europe, certainly. In fact, Europe in many ways is farther ahead than, than North America in, in this. The last time there was a lot of babble about, oh, the military needs this, they can't do without it, it's critical. No, Nobody, and, and prices you know, were skyrocketed and dropped and the Chinese withheld and, and uh, increased. All that was going on and it, it was, as Shakespeare said, you know, it, it signified all, all of the, the, the chaos signified nothing because government actually at that time was not interested in, in whether or not the supply was secure. They, they were interested in, in the battle so between the Chinese and Japanese. This has completely changed. They actually in Washington and in Brussels are very concerned about security of supply. So I think investors are making a mistake if they just walk away from this. This is not a short term situation. This is not, rare earths are now on the radar in Washington and in Brussels. And things are being done. I'm telling you that it's not a race between them because they're not, they're not cooperating. But uh, the fact is the Europeans are, are way ahead of Americans on this, but Americans are, are catching up. And so uh, this is a long-term investment. And look for the, the only interest anybody has in this space is producing companies or companies with a clear path to production. I see many, many, many startups saying, hey, we found rare earths in our bathtub in, you know, wherever. Forget that. The ones that have a path to production that can be done in two or three years are, are the ones of interest to everybody. And the ones that are producing are, are, are really hot. And the producers are Linus, Northern Minerals, Rainbow, uh, and, um, well, uh, let's say MP, the successor in interest to Molycorp, is producing uh, it's the largest producer in the non-Chinese world of, of uh, second largest after Linus of ore, but that ore is being shipped to China hundred percent. So even though they're mining out there, it's, it's actually for the Chinese market for a particular Chinese customer. So they're not being taken into consideration at this point uh, as a supplier uh, until that's, we don't know if, if they could supply because perhaps the Chinese have an exclusive. Nobody knows. But Linus, Northern Minerals, and Rainbow are definitely in production. And at the present time, um, uh, everyone is looking very closely at them. Uh, when I say everyone, Brussels and Washington, my shorthand for the two capitals. Uh, they're looking at these companies uh, intently. In fact, M M MP the successor and interest to Molycorp is, is very much on the radar in the United States, but there's a lot of confusion because of its, uh, of its ownership and because of its uh, customer base. Okay, so let's just uh, jump right in there. Um, obviously, extraction processes are right at the top of the food chain. Uh, yeah. And I do believe you have excluded a couple of producers there on your list, Jack. But hey, you know, it's Jack's list. That's what I always tell people. <laughs> You know, well, no, let Jack it, be Jack. So uh, with regards to your uh, the discussion on processing, you know, Alkane Research has put out some pretty tremendous news. I thought it was very no. disruptive about their technology for extracting rare earths that would decrease uh, the time and, of course, the expenses. This is a very expensive process, which is, I think, right. part of the reason why it's so complex and it's so few people can actually follow this market. Um, that will decrease uh, prices by 50%. Have you had a chance to explore that extraction process? And do you have any comments on that one? Uh, no, I don't know much about what Al Kane is doing. All I can tell you is that the Australian government is it has Al Kane on their list of companies that it is promoting in 
to and to the U.S. government as as uh, potential suppliers of material. Uh, Alcane, Hastings, Arafura, uh, and quite frankly, uh, obviously, of course, Linus, and now quite strongly, uh, Northern Minerals. But they're not the only Australian companies being uh, promoted by the Australian government. And when I say promoted, this means it's there's a potential that the Australian government will put money into these companies to bring them forward. And the Australian government has a plan to develop processing, downstream processing in Australia. They certainly have the technology, no question about it. Uh, it it's about money. And this, uh, I don't know what happened because, you know, I, I'm not privy to this, but yesterday the Prime Minister of Australia, the President of the United States had a meeting, and I, I know for a fact that they discussed the rare earth situation. What they came up with, uh, I'm, I'm not aware of, but uh, it was certainly a topic for discussion, no question about it. Well, Jack, thank you so much for joining us today and providing us really with a great update on the Australian rare earth uh, market. Thank you.